Well, this is Friday. It's May the 27th, 2022, and I'm coming to you with today's devotional from Heart of a Shepherd titled, God Sought for a Man and Found None. Now, our scripture reading for today is Ezekiel chapter 22, and I do invite you to open your Bible, uh, follow with me as I go through this outline of this passage of scripture. Now, as we come to Ezekiel 22, the sin and wickedness of Jerusalem is the subject. And I am left, after studying this passage, and asking myself, how could one nation, given the favor of the Lord like none other, sink to the depths of sin and depravity we find in this chapter. Indeed, it is both frightening and convicting when you realize how Judah's sins parallels the sins of the 21st century, and I'm thinking specifically of these United States. In fact, as I read and studied Ezekiel 22, I was moved to sadness I, I found myself sorrowing not only for Israel and history past, but for my own day and nation. You read the passage and, and see if you do not come away feeling the same. Now, we find in verses 1 through 22 of Ezekiel 22 what I'm describing as an indictment of Jerusalem and her citizens. Uh, for instance, consider today's scripture begins in verses 1 and 2 with the Lord summoning his prophet Ezekiel to serve as his prosecutor and asking the prophet, Son of man, wilt thou judge? Will you denounce? Will you pass judgment? Wilt thou judge the bloody, murderous city? Well, the Lord went on and answered his question in verse 2 and said, Yea, thou shalt show her Jerusalem, all her abominations. Now, as the prosecutor of Jerusalem, Ezekiel was to charge the people of that city with two crimes. The first crime was that of violence, for we read in verses 4 and 5, it was the city that sheddeth blood. And the second was idolatry, for the people had rejected the Lord and made idols. Well, the consequences of Jerusalem's sins were fourfold, and you find those in four, verses 4 and 5. The Lord declared the people to be, first of all, guilty. Secondly, they were defiled. Thirdly, they were worthy of death. And then fourthly, they had become a reproach even, even unto the heathen nations, who, we read, mocked the nation. Well, there are 12 national sins that we find recorded in verses 6 through 12. And if you'll notice, the egregious nature of Jerusalem's sins were declared boldly by the Lord through his prophet. For instance, let's consider them, verses 6 through 12. They had become a murderous, abusive people. Their sons and daughters dishonored their parents, verse 7. They oppressed the helpless and those who were foreigners, non-Hebrews, as well as orphans and widows. They despised those that were holy, or things that were holy. And then in verse 8, they desecrated the Sabbath, that is, the Lord's Day. In verse 9, they slandered and were grossly immoral. In verse 10, they had committed incest with their fathers. In verse 11, adultery with those who were not their wives. Verse 11, their families were scandalously incestuous. And then finally, in verse 12, men bribed to kill and charged exorbitant interest and blackmailed others for gain. Well, we have in verses 12 through 22 then, God's judgment. He's named the sins. Now here's the judgment. Jerusalem's wickedness was summed up in verse 12. They had forsaken and, and I quote, forgotten the Lord, and therefore their sins demanded his judgment. In verse 13, we read that the Lord clapped his hands at the people in disgust, for they provoked him to anger with their fraudulent gain. Jerusalem and Judah, once a powerful and valiant people, had become a weak nation of cowardice people in verse 14. The Lord had determined he would scatter his people among the nations of the world and declare he would consume their wickedness in his wrath, in verse 15. Now all this was done that the people might confess and acknowledge him as the Lord. In the fire of his wrath, in verse 18, he declared he would purify his people of their sins. 
Well, the problem with Jerusalem and Judah continues. In verse 18, when we read that they, the people themselves have become like worthless dross, impure, unholy. And in his wrath, the Lord would drive his people to seek shelter in Jerusalem. But Jerusalem itself under the siege of Babylon would become like a boiling cauldron of fiery judgment. And so we ask this question, uh, to what end will this great judgment upon Jerusalem? What was God's purpose? In verse 22, we read again, As silver is melted in the midst of the furnace, ye, so shall ye be melted in the midst thereof. Ye shall know that I, the Lord, have poured out my fury upon you. You'll notice in the balance of the scripture today, verses 23 through 31, the indictment of Jerusalem's leaders. You see, the leaders had failed the people. And already in verse 23, the Lord was withholding the rain which would cause thirst and famine. We read in verse 25, King Zedekiah and his court had become like ravenous lions, devouring the people, robbing them by corrupt means, whose violence and wars had made many widows. In verse 25, while the priest, the spiritual leaders of Jerusalem had violated the laws and commandments and desecrated the temple with idols and sacrifices. In verse 26, they had failed to sanctify that which was holy, and they did not keep the Sabbaths. Well, the political leaders, we read in verse 27, that like the king, they had become ravenous wolves and shedding the blood of the innocent to increase their dishonest gain. Well, there were false prophets in that day, even as there are false preachers in our day. And these false prophets were in the midst of the people, and we read that they dabbed the sins of the people with untempered mortar. The, the word there is they whitewashed the sins of the nation. They are accused of lying, making empty promises, deceiving, and in verse 28, in claiming to speak the words of the Lord, they were liars, and they were guilty. And then we come to the close of an indictment of the people themselves. They were, like their leaders, guilty. Guilty of extortion, guilty of, a, of theft, guilty of oppressing the poor and the needy and treating unjustly the non-Jewish people, the strangers in their midst. And so we ask the questions as we close. Was there any hope for Jerusalem? Were there any who might use uh, God might use to condemn the sins of the nation and call the people to repent. And the answer is summed up tragically in verse 30. The Lord says through his prophet, And I sought for a man among them, a man that would make up the hedge, a wall, and stand in the gap before me for the land. And God says that I should not destroy it. But tragically, I found none. You see, one man might have made the difference for Jerusalem. But we know that the king, the leaders, the people had already rejected and they scorned the prophet Jeremiah, who was a contemporary of Ezekiel. And tragically, all was lost. And the wrath of God would not be appeased. And I close with a question for you today. Are you willing to answer God's call? in the 21st century. Make up the head, stand in the gap, and declare God's truth with boldness. Oh, that God would raise up a new generation of men like Ezekiel. God bless.